Hello YouTube, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great because right after the Fujifilm X Summit, I'll be introducing Fujifilm's new camera, the X106, to you all around the world at the same time. Therefore, I am extremely happy. If you're also curious about this camera, if you've been waiting, it's time to meet. Let's get started. <music> We are holding the 6th generation of the X100 series. The first version came with the name X100. From the second version onwards, it was named by adding a suffix indicating the generation, such as X100S for the second version, X100T for the third, and X100F for the fourth. The fifth generation was named x 100 V. Some thought the V here represented the Roman numeral for five, while others believed it was from the word five itself. Both in Turkey and worldwide, it was pronounced as X100 Fi, perceived as a letter rather than a Roman numeral. Months ago, discussion started about the possible name for the sixth generation camera, along with rumors of its arrival. It is now clear that Roman numerals will continue, and we will refer to our new camera as X106, and writing the 6 in Roman numerals. The X100 series cameras have been popular and loved since they were first released. In my opinion, they hit their peak with the X100V, so much so that it became difficult to find the camera in stores and many people resorted to pre-ordering. After such a successful camera, the X106 comes. One inevitably wonders whether he will exhaust his big brother's legacy or surpass him. Part of the answer will be given in the detailed review we will conduct shortly, and the rest will be revealed over time. Let's start. The X106 comes with the next generation X processor 5, just like the XH2S, XH2, XT5, and XS20. The camera features a new generation sensor, the 40.2 megapixel X Trans CMOS 5 HR, designed for high resolution, as mentioned in previous review videos of XH2 and XT5. In this camera, emphasis is also placed on high resolution and image quality. The design of the X100 series has remained almost the same since its initial release. There's a simple reason for this. It features a beloved and highly functional design. Rather than completely overhauling this design with each new model, Fujifilm prefers to enhance it with subtle touches. Their promotional slogan, the one and only, reinforces the idea that they stick to a unique and singular design, both in dimensions and aesthetics, and they intend to continue this approach in the future, I believe they are making the right choice. We have another small, lightweight premium compact camera in our hands. It weighs 521 grams. This is 43 grams heavier than the previous version, but it incorporates an image stabilization system, IBIS. To fit this mechanism into the small body, they have redesigned the IBIS system from scratch providing a performance of up to six stops. The physical dimensions are 128 mil in length, 74.8 mil in height, and 55.3 mil in thickness. While the width and height remain the same as the previous version, the thickness has increased by two mil due to the inclusion of IBIS. This change is reflected in the grip. Comparing it, with the X100V, we observe that the grip has a slightly sharper line and feels better in the hand. The X106, just like the previous version, features a hybrid viewfinder. You can use either the electronic viewfinder or the optical viewfinder as you prefer. There's a third mode where, when using the optical viewfinder to frame the shot, you can also see the electronic representation of your focus area in the bottom right corner. The electronic viewfinder 
has a resolution of 3.69 million dots and is an OLED viewfinder with a 0.66x magnification. The optical viewfinder has a 0.52x magnification and covers a field of view of 95%. It provides a clear image, allowing you to see the boundaries and surroundings of your frame. It's also nice to have access to shooting values and other adjustable parameters in the optical viewfinder. Let's now move on to the LCD screen. It comes with a 3-inch touchscreen display with a 3.2 aspect ratio and a resolution of 1.62 million dots. Alongside touch autofocus and shooting features, you can also assign four customizable functions to the touchscreen. The only change from the previous version is the angle at which the LCD screen tilts away from the body. While the previous version tilted at 30 degrees, the new camera tilts at 45 degrees, allowing it to move further away from the body. This prevents obstructing a portion of the viewfinder image when viewed from above. The lens of the X106 is the same as the previous version, featuring the proven 23mm f2 fixed aperture lens, composed of eight elements in six groups. It has a minimum focusing distance of 10 centimeters and operates with an aperture range from f2 to f16. One of the significant aspects is the lens's compatibility with the new 40 megapixel sensor resolution, enabling the production of more detailed and higher quality photographs. Moreover, compatibility with the WCL and TCL additional accessories which convert the lens to wide-angle and telephoto perspectives, continues. Furthermore, when using these accessories, the high-resolution 40-megapixel images are still supported. Those who have these additional accessories can comfortably use them with the new camera. I would also like to mention that the lens has a very stylish front cover. The rest of the design elements, including the keypad, buttons and dials, are identical to the previous version. So much so that if you don't see the X106 logo on the camera, you could easily think you have the X100V in your hands. For those unfamiliar with the previous version, let's quickly mention the keypad of the new X106. On top of the camera, there is a shutter speed dial, below it an ISO dial, and on the right side, an exposure compensation dial. The power on off button and a customizable function button complete the top side. On the back, you'll find the menu OK button, play button, this back Bluetooth button, quick menu Q button, AEL AFL button, and drive delete button. On the left side, there is a single autofocus, continuous autofocus, and manual focus selection switch. On the right side, under the cover, there is a micro HDMI, USB Type C, and a 2.5 mil microphone jack. Looking at the bottom, we see the tripod mounting screw and the battery compartment cover. Inside the cover, there is an NPW126's battery and an SD card slot. The battery provides the performance you see on the screen, thanks to the optimized software. The only regret so far with this camera has been the choice of battery. It would have been great if they had used the new generation NPW235 battery. Looking at the front, viewfinder selection switch, a front dial, built-in flash, and an optical viewfinder window. The camera includes an internal four-stop ND filter, which in my opinion is an incredibly nice feature. With a single button, you can activate the ND filter when needed, effectively reducing the light. Being able to do this in both photos and videos is particularly advantageous. If you remember, this feature could only be used for photos in the previous version. Having an internal ND filter in your camera is a significant convenience, especially when compared to carrying an external ND filter for shooting with a wide aperture like f2 in video. The camera is equipped with multiple weather sealing gaskets for resistance against weather conditions. However, the only potential weakness in the ceiling, due to the movement of the lens's internal mechanism, is the front part of the lens. To eliminate this vulnerability, Fujifilm recommends using a filter. As I mentioned in the previous version, I'll say it again. If it were up to me, instead of saying, 
Using a filter provides complete weather sealing. I would market the camera along with a filter. I would confidently state that my camera is definitely weather resistant. It didn't happen with this camera, but maybe with the X107. I mentioned earlier that the X-Trans CMOS 5HR sensor and X-Processor 5 are used with this camera. Naturally, the advantages brought by this duo have also been reflected in the X106. These include an updated autofocus algorithm supported by the accelerated processor, resulting in a fast, stable, and reliable autofocus system. Additionally, the face eye detection system and object tracking feature, both powered by the same system, contribute significantly to the impressive capabilities of the X106. You can clearly feel the improved capabilities of the face eye detection system when comparing shots taken with both cameras. Another notable change is the reduction of the native ISO value to under 25, whereas it was ISO 160 in the previous version. Normally, an increase in resolution with the same sensor size can decrease each pixel's ability to capture light, potentially leading to more noise. To observe this, I captured and compared similar photos with both X106 and x 100 v in the same lighting conditions and high ISO settings. Despite the resolution increasing by 1.5 times, the noise, as seen on the screen, is almost identical in both cameras. The conclusion drawn from this is that this camera with this sensor achieves excellent ISO performance. Again, with the support of high processor speed, when the electronic shutter is selected, shutter speeds as fast as 180,000 seconds can be chosen. This provides a significant advantage for capturing high-speed objects seamlessly. Thanks to the digital teleconversion feature, you can take shots as if you have a 50mm or 70mm lens. Of course, when this feature is used, your frame is cropped, but due to the use of a high-resolution 40 megapixel sensor, even the relatively smaller frames that result from cropping are more than sufficient. For example, at 50 mil, the cropped frames are 5472 by 3648 pixels, and at 70 mil, they are 3888 by 2592 pixels, which is more than ample for many uses. As we know, one of the fundamental features that sets Fujifilm cameras apart from others is the film simulation modes. Fujifilm, having been a company producing negative films for years, leverages its expertise in colors through these film simulations. This allows us to obtain photos that resemble those from the analog era. The X106 includes the Reala Ace film simulation, which was first introduced with the GFX100 Mark II. This simulation stands out by providing natural colors and creating an analog film effect. In the color sample photos in this video, I also use the Reala Ace film simulation. On the other hand, you can create your own film simulation by managing all image quality parameters, such as grain effect, color chrome, and color chrome blue effects, sharpness, clarity, tone curve, and color saturation to simulate an analog look or create an image suitable for your style. In the black and white photos in this video, for instance, I used a film simulation of my own creation that emphasizes high contrast. As a feature I haven't seen in the Fujifilm X system cameras I've used or reviewed so far, there is the ability to personalize the zone autofocus mode. With this, you can customize and use autofocus zones in various sizes based on the nature of the subject you are shooting. Advanced photography features such as time-lapse, multi-exposure, HDR shooting, bracketing, panorama shooting, and advanced filters are also offered in this camera. When deciding to shoot continuous mode, you can choose low speeds with the mechanical shutter, such as 3, 4, 5, or 6 frames per second, or higher speeds like 8 or 11 frames per second. If you opt for the electronic shutter, you can achieve speeds of 8.9 and 13 frames per second. If you need even higher speed, with the electronic shutter, you can shoot with a cropped frame at speeds of up to 20 frames per second. With a single setting in the menu, you can turn off all features that make sound or emit light, 
such as the flash. This feature is very useful for shoots that require complete silence like concerts, theaters, or hospitals. My only criticism here is that despite the camera being so silent, you can hear the sound of the lens moving forward and backward when turning on off for waking from sleep. I think this is something that needs to be addressed. Once again, as a feature I see for the first time in this camera, the software update option has been added to the menu. Until now, we always perform this through a hidden screen accessed with shortcut keys. I think this way is better. Since I conducted this review about 1.5 months before the camera's release, the update that introduces compatibility with Fujifilm's new X app for X106 had not been released yet. Therefore, I haven't had the chance to try it, but X106 will work seamlessly with the X app. On the other hand, the camera can be used as a webcam that supports 4K video. Furthermore, the feature we have seen in the X-H2, X-H2S and medium format cameras, the ability to connect to the Frame I.O. platform. This feature allows your captured photos and videos to be instantly uploaded to your designated space on the Frame I.O. platform in the cloud. While you continue shooting, a team member connected to the same platform with your permission can edit the photo or video. This is a highly useful feature for collaborative groups such as studios, agencies, and film crews. However, to be honest, I couldn't determine if it was necessary for the X106. Now let's dive into the video capabilities from this point onward. Some cameras, like the X-H2S and X-H2, are hybrid, inclined towards both photography and video. But there are also cameras that lean more towards photography, with video being just a small additional function. In my eyes, the X106 is one such camera. It screams, I am created, for photography in every aspect. Therefore, personally, my opinion was that the video features in this camera should not advance beyond the previous version. However, this remains my opinion, because when we look at the video features, the X106 has taken on the role of an advanced camera. It can shoot videos at high resolutions, such as 6.2K at 30P and 4K at 60P. In full HD mode, there is a slow motion feature reaching up 10 times or 240p. Internally, video recording is possible with 4.2, two color sampling and 10 bit depth. And externally, via HDMI, you can record video with a 10 bit depth as well. It can record in F log one and F log two, with F log two providing a dynamic range of 13 stops and above. If you don't want to deal with log recording and color grading, you can record using any of the 20 film simulations, including Reala Ace. However, if you ask me, the most significant innovation for video is the system that enables touch tracking, something I previously requested as needs to be realized as soon as possible in my reviews of XH2S, XH2, and XT5. To use this feature, you need to select the autofocus type as wide tracking in the video menu. When you touch any object on the LCD screen, the autofocus system locks onto it and starts tracking it. I eagerly await the software update for this system to come to other X system cameras as well. To sum it up, it seems that the X106 has the potential to elevate the success of its predecessor. Based on the much loved and sold X100V, it inherits features and introduces new ones, such as a new 40 megapixel high resolution sensor a fast processor, in-body image stabilization, IBIS, a high shutter speed of 118,000, a low native ISO value of ISO 125, frame IO cloud connectivity, high quality video features, and touch tracking autofocus capabilities. It's not without a few weaknesses that I wish were different. For example, I wish it had the NPW235 battery, and it would have been convenient if an additional filter for weather resistance came with the system instead of requiring a separate purchase. Also, it would be great if we didn't hear the sound of the lens motor when opening, closing. Hopefully, these aspects will be improved in the next version. Nevertheless, even in its current state, 
The X106 is an incredible camera with compelling features, captivating in its compact form, and is poised to make a name for itself in the future with its high photo and video quality. What do you think? Should I sell the X-T5 and switch to the X-106?